think we're about ready. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, let's start by just having you say your name and spell it for us. Okay, uh, uh, Robert Gibson Colley. That's uh, from the last name. C O L L E Y. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and my name's Bob Bauman. And today's Bob day Bauman? Bauman. Okay, uh, Bob And today's date is November 20th, 2013, and we're recording this interview on the campus of Washington State University Tri Cities. So let's uh, start maybe by having you tell us uh, when you came to Hanford, uh, what brought you here? Yeah, um, I was uh, uh, at Spokane Air Base, and uh, the general came in and he said, uh, we're going to have to reduce uh, uh, the Korean uh, Air Force pilots, and, but we'd uh, like to keep you in reserve, ready reserve, and you'll fly every other weekend from, for the next uh, 20 years. And, uh, and we'll guarantee you a job somewhere. And uh, so uh, that was on Sunday, and on Monday morning I came to work here in uh, 1954. And uh, it, was a, it, was, it was about a month before I came to work then. And uh, I came to work as a uh, nuclear health physics, radiation monitors. Okay. <laughs> and so how long had you been uh, in the service prior to 1954? I, I, I came off active duty on Sunday and came to work here one when, day. When did you start in the service? Oh, in uh, here, oh, when did I start? In 1942. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, in yeah, 1942. Okay. Okay. And I had uh, three years of uh, cadet uh, ROTC at Walla Walla. Okay. Uh -huh. mm. All right, and so then you came to Hanford in 1954 in and nuclear health physics, you said? Uh, nuclear health physics? Is that where you worked? I, I worked for General Electric. For General Electric. Uh huh. And so, uh, could you what what sort of work did you do? Uh, I was um, nuclear health physics, and I, I after I came here, I went and got my tech tech degree uh, uh, from in the side uh, while I was working here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the the area like when you came here in 1954? Well, um, it, it was uh, riding buses to school, to, and uh, they uh, they gave us homes, and uh, uh, we, we uh, brought our families here, and um, and went to work by bus. And buses picked us up right in front of our house uh, here in Hanford, and took us to work and brought us back. And uh, and what? Uh, where was your house? Uh, 1940 uh, Benham. Okay. 1940 41. Uh, it, it was a duplex. A duplex. Okay. A house duplex. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my children started the school here that year. Uh, the boy and a girl, and uh, they started at Lewis and Clark School, just up the street. <laughs> And so, uh, working in nuclear health physics, what what sorts of tasks did you do? What sorts of things did you do? At um, all, all, any, any any place that anybody worked, uh, we had to be there, and we had to know you had to know what the air was clear, uh, the uh, work area was clear, uh, what dose rate they were getting, and uh, set a dose rate for them uh, to work there for a certain length of time. So you, you were all over the site then? Yeah, I, I was, uh, at, at those days, everybody worked all over the site, wh wherever you were needed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, but I actually went into uh, uh, U-Plant uh, my first day out on the, on the project, and uh, that was the beginning of U-Plant, T-Plant, uh, Radox, um, Then I went to Dash Five, and then I went to Pure, the Purex startup again. Uh, um, 
I was there for uh, two years. Then I went back to Dash 5. Okay. Um, so essentially you were setting uh, rates for yes. workers? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, we went in and we uh, checked the air and uh, uh, checked it for clothing requirement that, they, that these people would wear and what their, their mask levels would be. Uh, how much, uh, we'd find out exactly how, how much they were going to take and they were, how much they were allowed to take uh, for any one day. And uh, generally in those days, uh, uh, unless there's something very special where you take a double, why you normally take 50. And uh, that, that was it. But if, we, if it was a very special job uh, where it was dangerous to, to pull somebody out of the middle of a job, uh, because of the radiation level. Why well, sometimes they, they would, would take a double, then they, 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 they go into overtime. So did, did you have to wear any special uh, clothing or uh, Everything was special. From the time we walked in and changed clothes, we never saw our clothing again until we took our shower and went, went home. Uh, we wore uh, uh, Special underclothes, special. Uh, uh, we, really, we, if we lost our clothes due to, to some uh, a spill or something, well, we we could go trip down to our underclothes uh, and and get out uh, and still be uh, be clear. If we if we went past that, well, then we had a, a body contamination and uh, we would we would we would we would normally clean up whoever we, uh, we got contaminated. And depending on whether they were working with uh, uranium, plutonium, uh, americium, or what, whatever, you know. Did uh, did it happen very often? Where uh, were there very many times when a worker was contaminated and you had to clean them up? Um, every day, somewhere, and they had to be cleaned up, and uh, nasal smears given, and uh, and before they were left to go home, they they were. Perfectly, uh, we had to have them perfectly clean, or or we had to keep them and and uh, and and give them more more tests. Okay. But, uh, so how how would you go about cleaning someone up who had been contaminated? Well, we uh, if it, if it was skin contamination, well, we we could uh, take off a, a layer of skin. We put on um, I forget what what the name of it was, but we'd put it on and then we take and then take a layer of it off. But, uh, and to, to, to live perfectly clean. And from the, if they were clean, then they could go home. If they weren't, well, we, had, we had to keep them over. And, uh, and if, they had to, if you had to keep them over, what happened? You would run tests, did you say? No, we just have to keep cl clean on them. Okay. You know, we've, we've had, we had there, there's, you, when you're working with this type of thing, there's, there's some spill, something or there's something contaminated or something broke loose or something uh, didn't didn't go right, and uh, everything had to be cleaned right down to no no contamination detectable. Mm -hmm. And when so when you when someone was contaminated and you were involved in cleaning them up, was, yes, was it just you or were there more? Than oh one no person? no, there's uh, yeah no there's uh, depending on whether whether you were a junior or a senior, and uh, after you got to be senior, why? You, you were always the one to, to, to clean somebody up, and the juniors would watch, and uh, so that they, they they would be prepared sometime to, in the future. We they went through a six-month training period of uh, and preparation uh, so they could become uh, a, um, a, a monitor. And how long did you work? Uh, then in uh, nuclear health physics, how long were you at Hanford? Thirty-four years. Well, approximately thirty-four years. You, you, you just liked a little bit. I went there, and uh, I didn't work there until till in January of '55, and I retired in uh, August of '86. I, I think I figured out about thirty-four, almost thirty-four years. And that whole time you were in uh, health physics? Yep. Um, and the only time I was gone was when I was on active duty uh, with the Air Force, once a year. Right. Yeah, but uh, never, never lost any time. Uh, 
<laughs> we, we had had a lot of different things happen. But, uh, it seemed like the, when we had accidents of some sort, spills or uh, uh, contamination levels above above level, uh, it seemed like I was always there. I, I, uh, even when things, even with fires and, and explosions and stuff like that, and uh, we, um, uh, I, I guess the worst right off the bat was was when we ha we had uh, um, had, I can't think of the place where they, they mixed in dash five, but it uh, it. Uh, they had a spill and it had had a double, and it had a, and uh, so they 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 got everybody out in, in about ten or fifteen uh, minutes. I mean, just real quick, just walked away, just left things like it were, and then uh, three of us went back in. Uh, we each one we we knew each floor exactly. We knew where every crevice was, where every box or anything was, where something might be, that. Uh, might be avoided, or might, someone might walk away from it and not know it's there. Mm -hmm. So we, we had to go back and go through these buildings. We knew all these buildings. We, were at, we did, worked at them day after day for years, and we knew where everything was, even if just got an even change of clothes. Uh, we, we checked everything. And uh, when we finally, we were allowed an hour. We were in a, a thousand R dose rate. And we were allowed an hour, so um, and that's and, and we took a hundred R, and, and we were only supposed to take you know uh, a, a little bit each day, but uh, it was classified at that time, and uh, no one ever knew how much except that we we knew, and the health physics people knew, and uh, we took uh, in in. In less than an hour, we took a hundred R body, and uh, that's uh, that's about many years of, of working out there. <laughs> you normally take three R a year, a whole year, wow. and uh, we we took a uh, hundred R in less than an hour. But uh, we, we no one was left in the building, and uh, we were very fortunate. Everything was that would run was still running. And uh, we, then they were come in to help shut it down and and get things cleaned up again. Mm -hmm. But uh, they uh, they brought us down in in uh, patrol cars from from the uh, badge house, and uh, we just had so much time. So once we got out of the patrol car, and uh, we would be back there at that place. And if we weren't there, uh, they they'd come look for us. But uh, there was three of us. And uh, the other two boys are are, are all gone. Uh, I was the oldest of the, of the bunch, but uh, they died young. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we we never knew for sure what whether we would would. Uh, I I never felt anything. I never felt anything from 100 R. I, I didn't 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 feel headachey or sick or anything. Uh, what, what, and they allowed me to come back to work the next day. Wow. And, uh, uh, but that was all classified at that time, and nobody, uh, they, they got it okayed from someplace. And I never had any ill effects from it. Uh, I, I took my maximums every year and uh, in all those years and never, never had any ill effects that I know of. Do you know what, uh, roughly what time period this incident was? What, what? What roughly what year that would have been that that happened? That incident. You know, I used to remember exactly right down to the hour, and and I <coughs> but that um, <coughs> seemed like it was seemed like it was fifty six, fifty five, fifty six. Uh, gosh, they've got all the records there, but I. Um, it was fairly soon. No, it wasn't easy. It, it must had to be sixty, because I'd been here a long time then, and uh, got everything, got everything back, back up and going again. Yeah. <laughs>
And you said you didn't experience any ill. Pardon? You said you did not experience any ill effects. Did the other two men who were there with you? Did they experience any ill effects from that? Or? I don't hear very good. But I'm sorry. You said you you didn't feel sick after that at yeah, all. Yeah. Did the other two men who were in with you? Did they get sick at all from that? No, no. not to my knowledge. No, I never had any ill effects. I, I, I've always had pretty good luck. I was uh, the Air Force cadets, uh, Army Air Force cadets back in the old world, and uh, pretty good shape, and stayed in good shape. And uh, uh, we would fly uh, 50, 60 hours at a time towards the end there, and um, no, uh, no ill effects from that either, except you get tired, and then we, you, you switch off with crews, you know. And we'd go from here to, to California or over to China or someplace, you know, always someplace on the earth. Yeah. Uh, uh, were there any other uh, sort of major incidents that you remember? From well, we had 80, about 10 years later, and uh, uh, I was right in, the, right in the middle of treating people out, and uh, um, the, the people that were injured during, during the blast were taken to Cadillac in special, special rooms and they were kept there for a long while. This was when, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, I can see him, but I can't. <laughs> he, he was the one that got hurt the, hurt the worst. And he was down here, down in Cadillac for years. Oh, was that McCluskey? McCartney, yeah, McCartney, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was quite a guy. And he was an operator out there and, and uh, got him out and we, we got him downtown and took the the um, <laughs> can't think of a lot of these names. Uh, the the thing that we took him downtown in ambulance ambulance and took it back, checked it out. It was wildly contaminated and went and buried it. <laughs> That's what happened to it. Um, but it, it, it was uh, I worked. Uh, 91 doubles to get that straightened out. We, we didn't um, didn't have enough people to keep keep the place going, and uh, so we would we'd ask for overtime. And uh, I, I I put in the most the the, the most doubles that anybody has ever ever heard of. 91 doubles straight straight days. 91, 90, 91 doubles, 16 hours. But I'd been used to that in the military, so. I, uh, or more, but not that many days at a time. But uh, and, and we finally got back to, to normal normal hours. And and uh, but this wasn't ever it wasn't. Uh, but they, they they stopped going more than two and a half hour, uh, days at a time uh, overtime mm -hmm. after after they got that got it straight before they could get back to work. So so during those ninety one uh, doubles was it. So working on cleaning up after yeah. the incident mm -hmm. with yeah. Uh, okay. yeah 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 got to, got to the point where they they they, they didn't, didn't ask me they, they just accepted that I'll be there and I was. <laughs> and you mentioned that the ambulance uh, you buried the ambulance. Do you know where it was buried? Uh, out there in in uh, Two West. In Two West. Yeah, um, but the, the, I believe those were about ten years apart. The, the uh, uh, the dash five and the uh, or, or the, the um, gosh I can't why I can't remember that name but for, for that blew up there McCluskey no no, uh, no oh the first one I don't the know. first one I can't it gets away from you know if, uh, when you get up in your nineties if you don't use them why you forget them. <laughs> Uh, any any other incidents that stand out in your? Well, we had lo lots of little th little th little ones, but uh, they uh, we could take care of them. They're generally out there. Once in a while, we bring somebody down for cleanup down to the hospital here. Uh, but uh, somebody was w with them at all times, and uh, never any chance of spreading spreading anything. And of course, then um, homes were homes were surveyed here every 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 so often by the monitoring people. Uh, just, just a check, just a spot check here and there, around through, through the people that lived here, mm -hmm. and uh, 
uh, once in a while you'd get something, uh, maybe um, a bathroom or something. Would somebody had come from the project home, well then th th that started a whole different series of things. Your buses were having to be rechecked. Everything had to be rechecked. Uh, never left anything for chance because it, uh, it doesn't go away. It, mm -hmm. But uh, once in a while, you'd, you'd find a little bit in, in home, but nothing, nothing real drastic, and nobody uh, was ever uh, uh, fired for, for bringing it home. They, they, uh, they, it just something was overlooked at the time. They, 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 they bypassed a monitor, some way or another. They, they, they got they, or they or they touched something that, and then went into a clean area, and, and they thought they were still clean, and they went home with it. But uh, no, he's always right, right on it. <laughs> uh, so you said you worked there for almost 34 years. Did the equipment change over time, the, the equipment that you used? Uh, our detection equipment didn't change. We, we had uh, uh, the, the Geiger counters and we had the uh, uh, Alpha, um, I'm trying to think of the, 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 the sampling equipment that we used and uh, the detection equipment and the air sample stuff. And uh, uh, no, uh, in that length of time, uh, nothing had changed yet, but they changed fairly soon after that, I understand. Hmm. And uh, uh, got a little more sensitive equipment. Um, and and they had, people had more schooling after. Uh, uh, things that were brought, brought uh, when when they when you can uh, f find instruments one another that can detect this much easier. Mm -hmm. Why well, uh, that's that's what they brought in later, and it's real handy, real nice, mm -hmm. very. But other than that, well, Geiger counters and Junos and and uh, just that, that was the things that they had when they started, and that's the things that we we had. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. Uh, and how about it, when you had to clean someone up? Did that sort of process stay pretty much the same? Equipment? Yeah. Um, well, for at first you used the, the normal equipment, you know, if anything, you know, a higher level, a Juno or Alpha, uh, um, so we can be detected. And then we, then we, we and it, but if it's larger than that, why well, they were left there, left out there and cleaned up out there. It wasn't until we got down to the very minor things that we couldn't, it was on skin or in skin, um, on clothing, uh, that we had just in, in real clean rooms. So if, if there was anything on them, well, we, we, we could get it real, real quick. And then I, I, don't, uh, I don't recall anyone Knowing, knowing they took anything home. Right. Um, everybody was pretty, pretty respectful of that. So did you have to wear certain kind of gloves? Uh, did you have to uh, wear yeah, a mask? We, or yeah, we, depending on whether it was fresh air or whether it was a, a salt mask, uh, depending on what kind of work we were on, it was sealed um, when, we're, when we're working okay, in the canyons, uh, in the cells. Uh, we're... Um, uh, sealed down tight, and uh, and then then we had somebody check us as we came out, and uh, so we never never carried anything out. But it took took some time. To, sometimes it took longer to get it get out than it did to do the job. <laughs> um, so obviously there were a lot of precautions that were taken, a lot of safety yes. measures. Did you yeah. feel then? You, you know, obviously you. I don't remember anybody uh, knowing they took any shortcuts. Right. To, 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 in order to get a job done. Mm -hmm. You know, ev everything was always in a hurry. Everything was uh, everything was on a schedule. Well, sometimes when you're working with contamination and radiation, it just don't work on a schedule. And we'd, we'd have to hold, oh, and they just, see, uh, they had people in overtime and running another, but we, we couldn't couldn't let them go. We'd have to call the job off until uh, they cleaned it up. And then uh, they got, I think, cleaned back. 
uh, where they could handle it, but then uh, turn them loose. But we we're, were always with them. I mean, by turn them loose, you mean they could go to work, you know, right. whatever. Uh, whether it was re uh, mechanical or or something else, or or, or a flow of of, uh, of contaminated material. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they had a lot of high level stuff there. You know, some of that stuff. Would be, get it on you. If you didn't get it off real fast. Well, you, could, you could get hurt. Um, there's several times that we thought the people were going to get hurt, but it, it turned out that they it came out okay. Uh, but they they did have it on them. But they, if they hadn't got it off of them, well, they, they would have been in trouble. It uh, seemed like we that was the, if you worked there, stay clean, stay clean, mm -hmm. and never take any shortcuts. A shortcut would, would could cost you your life. But I don't remember anybody ever dying from it or like that. Uh, um, given the the sort of materials that were there uh, and the job you had, did you feel that Hanford was a safe place to work? I, I, how's that? Uh, did you feel that Hanford was a safe place to work? Was there? Oh yeah, safety? yeah, uh huh, yeah, yeah, it sure was. And uh, everybody was built around uh, doing the job. Getting the job done, um, but but not. Do, uh, I don't recall any job that was was, was carried on unsafely. Mm -hmm. It was cold. It was right in the right in the middle of of some pretty something uh, you know semi uh, nuclear uh, or, or whatever. Um, uh, we stopped and, and, and took care of there. And then, then started back again, and uh, but that that was the way of life, mm -hmm. and that was the way the way you did it, and uh, no one ever ever considered taking shortcuts. What was was the most what was the most challenging uh, part of your work at Hanford, and maybe what was the most rewarding part? Uh, keeping safety, keep, keep keeping people safe, and. Uh, uh, taking care of their uh, internal, external um, safety and the contamination, always, always watching for contamination internally or externally. Uh, so th when you went home at night, why well, you felt felt okay. And uh, but t some people took a tremendous amount of radiation, but uh, they could still there was. They were it, it was a radiation. It, was, it wasn't contamination, mm -hmm. so uh, you didn't didn't worry about going home or, or exposing your family to anything. So as you look back over the over thirty years that you worked at Hanford, how was Hanford as a place to work? Good. Yeah, everything was taken care of. Uh, uh, you, you, they got you to work. They, uh, they they made it as, as, as so that you you, you didn't worry uh, about coming to work, and uh, and that was good because a lot of people were, you know, some pretty high. Well, there's some lethal dose rates out there. If if you had to get around them, and you took very very small amounts of it, and uh, uh, so so you didn't 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 really worry about. Uh, I mean, the only time was when 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 you when we had. Some criticality, and some of us would volunteer. But we we would we would volunteer because we were older. Uh, we weren't uh, having families. Uh, we um, well, I don't know. We, we would we take the necessary precautions. We'd back off if we if, we, if something didn't seem right, and uh, look at it again from another angle. So. Uh, if if someone took an overdose, it'd be because of, t of too many days of overtime, and they finally got got that down to where they would. If you'd had so much, take had taken so much dose rate for for a number of hours, why you couldn't take any more. You, you you, and it was always within the safe limits. Uh, I don't remember anybody getting an overdose of uh, radiation, uh, except for us that. 
that had to in order to find out if our buildings were clear and there was nobody left in them. To search the buildings, we, we, we had to take an over amount and we, and they were supposed, like, like in our big building at Dash 5 there, only three of us volunteered. But there's three floors and we, we knew before we went in how much, about how much time it would take to go through to every room on every floor so that we wouldn't leave any, any, any if anybody uh, fainted, uh, uh, had a heart attack or something like that in getting out, uh, would still be there because nobody was back in that building for two or three days. You, know, you were just clicking and clacking away. <laughs> you know, it, it's a, kind, of, kind of a... Uh, kind of different sounds, you know, it, uh, make make you feel a little anxious because all the, all the alarms are going, and uh, and which which alarms are the, are are the ones that you you're, you're watching for that might be external and uh, in dose rates or contamination or other type of things like that. Most of the contamination levels were <coughs> on around Cooplex there was. Uh, were going off, and we ha we had to find where where that spread was, how bad was it, and what it was going to take to clean it up. And uh, it took a, quite a while, but uh, they'd give people their maximums and and send them home. <laughs> That's they got it all cleaned up and back to work again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, did, so did you have to have, you talked about safety and did you have like regular safety training that they have that in hand for? Did you have to? Yes. Have yeah, everything was safety. Yeah. And you had special, special meetings. If you're, if you're going to do a, a special job, uh, say down in one of the cells or something like that, you had training on it, uh, a, a dry run training in another cell that was clean. So you knew exactly what you were going to handle, how long you were going to handle it, how many people it was going to take to handle that, and we'd set the dose rates. They, they would only take uh, maybe a, an overtime of, of uh, a one, one overtime, uh, a number of overtime, but well, uh, of uh, uh, taking, two, uh, taking, taking a double in, in uh, exposure. And then if it took 10 people to do that, it took you just lined up ten people and dressed them and and got them ready and and you got the others out and uh, so nobody uh, had took uh, any extra over what they were supposed to take and then their badges were red mm -hmm. and th and they knew right then that whether they were going whether they were okay or not if they were concerned about it and uh, once in a while uh, you'd, you'd open up something that. Uh, in, in trying to get that job done, you'd open up something else, and then, of course, we were right there, and, and our instruments would, would and we're, we're dressed too, so our instruments would, would tell us right there, we were taking, you know, working on that, right there. And, uh, and then we could either tell them they could work uh, two inches, five inches, uh, uh, a foot, two foot, uh, or uh, arm's length, and uh, what the dose rate would be. And, uh, so try to try to try to keep everybody as, as healthy and as, as good as good, good, you know, as a, and it, it went off pretty good. Mm -hmm. Everybody felt comfortable with it anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes everybody human, you know. Sometimes they, they make uh, little little boo boos, but uh, if you caught them, you never let them back in again. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, so some people will will just for some reason or another. They just want to get into trouble, mm -hmm. and when you find out that person, you you get him out. Then you, you never let him go back in. He's a he's a, he's a hazard, so you don't. You don't. He 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 put he's put on a cold cold job somewhere here on the project, or he's fired. But uh, you never 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 played around with him, and uh, it was. I don't remember people by name as to any any particular one, but uh. Uh, I want to go back. You you mentioned earlier that when you uh, first came here and moved into a house, you you took a bus to work, and it would pick you up 
uh, in front of your house. How long did you do that? How long did you take the bus to work? No, you, you think you, that, that was a big thing for people to drive. And uh, um, uh, people didn't, some people didn't even have cars. They'd pick you up and you'd, you'd have a bus stop real close to your house. They'd go all through Richland here and, and they'd, they'd pick you up they bring you back and drop you off right about your house. Um, but it was, um, gosh, I, I, never, I never did drive to work. I always, had a, had, I always took a bus. Took bus. But, but during that, towards the end of that, some people were driving. And depending on uh, where they worked and, and what job they did and if they had to move around a little bit. Mm -hmm and they could drive to the project parking lot. Mm -hmm. And then, then they had to, to go over to uh, work just like the rest of us would. But, uh, no, it was so gradual, it just, it, it just it never, it, and, and, and those dates are, were also familiar at the time. Boy, we were gonna, we were gonna be able to drive, or we were gonna take the buses clear off. And I, I and that would have been a big day, and, and I, I'm trying to think, uh, just, just can't remember. <laughs> but they sold the house in 58, so I know it was, it was uh, before that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so did you, did you buy a house then at, uh -huh. after 50, in 58? Yeah, I, I was allowed uh, one, one house, an A house, and I'd already been in it uh, for a, 10, 15 years. I lived in that house 40 years, or, or, or either, either had it, you know, for, for 40 years. And I bought it and then I kept it uh, a long time. Uh, we played, uh, we paid $7,200 for, for an A house. And uh, I kept, I, all told before I sold it, to, I built a new house out in Keene Village. You got 109000 for it. But we'd fix them up a little bit here and there, you know. But they were good houses. They were easy to, easy to heat and easy to, they were comfortable, nice rooms. And, and they're, they're all, most all of them are still standing. <laughs> and do, you, do you remember anything else about the community of Richland at the time in the 1950s? Uh, were there any special community events or, or things like that that you remember? Well, <laughs> My my spare time was was uh, was with military, <coughs> so I didn't have much much spare time. Uh, um, towards the end, I, I flew to uh, China uh, for twelve years. Every other other week, never missed a week, and worked here full time. But uh, we find the old C one forty ones. That was quite a, quite a drop from, from B-52s and 36s. And <laughs> but they were, it was a mix, good mix. But ev everything, you, you, regardless of where you went, you, you, if you, like in Japan, uh, had family there. But I had to have somebody go with me because of, of my job here and my Air Force job. Um, class, uh, classification all the time. Mm -hmm. Never talked. Never talked about it. Mm -hmm. and they knew that you worked here, and that was that was good enough. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of lot of classification. Uh, some some jobs were. Gee, you, 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 you were afraid to talk to anybody. <laughs> so did could you tell your family uh, like so what uh, you did at Hanford at all? No. Or? no. They didn't really know what sort of job. You're as far as uh, family was concerned, my children were going to grade school here, and my wife didn't work. She just uh, took care of us all. Um, what what they read in in the papers or from things like that, mm -hmm. and and they knew better than to ask. You, mm -hmm. It was classified, and you, but they got used to that in the Air Force. And the uh, sack was, boy, it was it, as much or more so than Hanford. <laughs> but uh, uh, 
You, you got so you just lived with that. Yeah, I mean, gosh, you never. You, but 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 also you you remembered a lot of those things for a long time, even after you could have maybe talked about them. But this time nobody was particularly interested. <laughs> was that difficult at all to to be working, you know, and then come home and not be able to talk to anyone about your job at all? Uh, no. Uh, when, when you when you got off the uh, out of your building, why uh, we just didn't didn't do it. Uh, once in a while, they'd say, "Where do you work?" And they'd say, oh, "You know," or uh, something. You know, <laughs> uh, try try to not answer them. So, that, but uh, if you did, why well, you tell them what building you worked in? You know, and uh, every, every building had a, had a classification about it. And uh, they wanted to, if you worked in that building, you didn't have any business talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Is there, uh, so is there anything, um, anything from your experiences uh, working at Hanford that we haven't talked about yet that you'd like to talk about? I think you should talk about. Oh, yeah. There's things, things that, uh, Oh gosh! At the time, there 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 was a lot of things that we'd like to have talked about, but uh, no, I, I can't remember any, anything. Well, and um, anything you'd like to talk about, it was classified, and and you can go to special to school, special this, special that, and uh, guards. You know. But it, it it was it was I I enjoyed working here. Mm -hmm. I worked uh, I worked lots of overtime mm -hmm. uh, because I enjoyed the job. And uh, uh, my my outside interest was with military and uh, and I w every spare minute that I had while I was with that either in Walla Walla or I was base commander at Walla Walla uh, different. Uh, uh, in, in the reserve side, recovery units, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I was pretty busy all the time. Mm -hmm. and I was looking ahead to either here or there, and then uh, when I re uh, retired from the military, well then and then I had more time to work here, uh, doing things and my, and with my family. I go, go places and do things, and, but uh, it, it was it all worked out good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming in today and, and sharing oh, yeah, your experiences well, with us. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry, I can't remember a lot of things. Gosh, it's, uh, it's surprising. Uh, when, when you stop using it and you weren't supposed to talk about it, then, then you just disappear. I mean, you just, just go on unless someone mentions something and then it brings it up to you. Oh, you did a great job. I, I, a lot of years. Some really interesting stories, so yeah. I appreciate it. But my 